Hey everyone, we're back. So we learned last day how to do a hip hinge. Now what we're going to do is make it a bit more complex by adding some load to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a hang deadlift or a top down deadlift. With the hang deadlift, we're going to be adding weight. So what we need to do is keep our center of mass close to our body. That means that we keep the bar or whatever weight that we're holding as close as we can at all times. What AJ is going to do is, still thinking of the hip hinging that we learned in the last video, he's going to repeat. He's going to keep that nice straight back, he's going to push his hips back, and he's going to keep his knees from traveling forwards. As he moves, the bar is going to travel in a straight line up and down. If the hips don't move far enough back, the knees are going to be in the way, and that's when we hit the bar with our shins or our knees. And that's how we get those lovely little bruises, which we don't really want. Another way that we can do a deadlift, depending on your range of motion, is off of the blocks or off of the floor. AJ is still going to be focusing on those important keys for hip hinging, so the bum coming back, the back staying straight, and the knees not coming ahead. Only difference now is that he has an increased range of motion. When the range of motion increases, it's really important that we keep that neutral spine and we have stability. If we don't, there's a risk of injury and hurting the lower back. So we've learned how to hip hinge, we've learned how to add weight to it. Now, stay tuned to find out how we can make it more complex by making it more unstable.